Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the full version of the script, which allows us to set configuration ourselves. I'm going to open the pack. Now, this is a further developed version of the script. It's not the same as the free one, which comes with our doors and windows. So I will have to go through this next owner procedure again. Taking off one permission. And this will give me my script. We're going to configure this door over here. So I'm going to drop the script and the access is note card inside. For the access this note card to work, the door has to be sold with modify permissions. Okay, now if I'm going to access the menu now by sliding my mouse at the door, I will get the same menu as my customer will get with possibility to change access settings, same as before, and the possibility to toggle the auto closure feature. With on, it will open on bump or touch and has some settings for distance. With off, it's open and closes on touch only. Okay. For me, if I want to change the configuration of this door, I have to wear the little hut that comes with the pack. It will appear here at the bottom of your screen. And if I slide on the door now, it will open a menu with all the configuration settings. First, let's take a look at the movement settings. I can do a test move here and then I see the door is not opening in the correct direct direction. There are four directions here uh, we can choose. You just have to click them until you find the one that, uh, that you need and that should be this one. Now if you are looking here at the moment, if the door is opening, this is not uh, very nice. Therefore we have to set the pivot position of the door. There are three automatic ones, edge, middle and central. And let me go to a regular prim to show you the difference. So this prim here is set up the same as the door we, we have. Um, with edge it will pivot on the axis that is on this edge of this side, like this. And with a setting of middle it will pivot on the middle of this side. And then central, well, it just pivots at the central. So back at our door, because for us the most interesting will be the manual pivot position, because here we will be able to set exactly where it pivots, and we will want this to happen where the hinges are. So therefore I have to position the door in its open state. Going to use a prim to help with uh, positioning this. So you just have to place it exactly where it should be, like that. And then hit the save button. And now the door will be opening and closing exactly where we want it at the hinges. The manual pivot can have some neat effects, like I've done with the garage door. Here is it set up with uh, just simple edge movement, like this. And so I'm going to set a manual pivot position, because I want it to be in the end state up here. Save this. And now we have this uh, nice rolling garage door and the pivot will be uh, somewhere over here. The last thing we can set at this rotating door is the angle at which it opens. Currently it's uh, at 90% but we can make this uh, going wider or more closed depending on uh, what you are looking for. Um, the axis can also be changed. This is not really relevant with this door, but for another type of door, this can be interesting that you can make it um, move on another axis like this or like that. And then we also have besides the rotate, the possibility to make it slide. 
or make it resize, which is called the uh, curtain option. Um, these also have a direction, of course, in which we can have it uh, slide or resize like this. And we can also change the offset. So if we want it to make slide further, we can change this this way. Okay, back at the main menu here, we have the option to change the speed. Currently, speed one is the fastest we were having, and we can go in four stages slower up to speed four, which is the slowest, like that. Then there's the option to change the sound. The product comes with a few uh, built-in sounds. Let me zoom in a bit to make sure you can hear it. So we had a regular one. And there's a creaky one. There are two slides. Curtain. A mechanical one. It's the one I've used for the garage doors. A metal one. And a window. Then you can also set your custom sound. Um, therefore, you have to add two sounds in alphabetical order first close, then open. So um, then you can put in like this you name the first one A, the second one B, A for close, B for open, and uh, then they will just uh, work right away. Um, and here there's also the possibility to change the, the basic volume of the sounds. The final option we have is setting a sync channel. Uh, this is needed in case of double doors that you want to have to operate together. Currently they have their own script and their own configuration. And you can see they are uh, opening independently. Uh, to have them open together, I have to assign the same sync channel and they have to be in the same link set. So you can see here the wall here is the root. So they are in the same link set. Let's open configuration of the right one. Here is the sync um, channel. You can take whatever channel you like. Um, in case you have a larger house with several double doors and double windows, you will use different sync channels. So let's take, uh, for example, number three. Here you can see it's at sync three. And I have to do the same with the other door. Also assign it to the same channel. And if I'm going to click one of the doors now, they will open together. The sync channel also comes into play when we are going to use the mat detection system. So I've rested out the mat detection riser, where there's a, a lot of uh, detection mats inside. Uh, here at the main flats, we can see the categories we have. We have uh, just a straight one. And there are is a left turn, and there's a right turn as well. Then there's the radial one in case you're going to use uh, round stairs or something. And then there's the dual one, which combines the straight one with the radial one. So for now, we just take a simple long one. Um, this has to be placed on both sides of the door. So we're going to place it like this. It can be resized as well. Now it has to be linked to, to the door to be in the same uh, link set. And we have to set the sync channel, the same as we had with the door. So we have set this to three. And this with the detection mat, this is done at the description of the mat. So here at this uh, description, we are going to set the same sync channel, channel number three, like this. And then we're going to link it to the same root as the door is. And now we have a detection mat system. Where's my avatar over here? So whenever the avatar walks onto the mat, the door will open. Oh. Like this. Pretty simple. Very handy. 
Um, then the mat itself, out of us, you just have to set it transparent so it's not visible. You can do this here, to it transparent, and you have the detection mat system. Um, there are mats available in all different uh, sizes uh, in heights. Um, because if you're going to use steps and stairs and stuff like that, you can uh, use these uh, all these uh, available mats for this purpose. One last remark on copy pasting configuration from one door onto another. So we have our door here, which is completely set up. And uh, in fact, the configuration is stored here at the description. Um, I'm going to res out a fresh door, which has no configuration yet. I'm going to unlink it and place the script inside. Like this. Now, if I'm going to operate the door now, it will just open in a default uh, way. Um, what I'm going to do is take the description of this door, copy it, and I'm going to paste it onto the other door, and then hit the tab to confirm, and I'm going to reset the script. That's in the door. And if I'm going to operate this door now, it will open and close exactly as this door. So you can configure one door and then just copy paste the configuration onto all your other doors if needed. This was it. Thank you for watching. Have fun building and see you in Second Life.